Hi friends, I'm Paula. And I'm Melissa, and welcome. We are so glad to have you this morning. If this is your first Sunday with us, a special welcome to you. Yes. Hey, whether you're watching us on Facebook, YouTube, or Theater 8, I do see you, Theater 8, <laughs> or for the best viewing experience, southpointforyou.com slash live, we just invite you to take a moment to share this message out on social media. That's right. Hey, this week, Pastor Matt is back with a new sermon series called Stress My Season. Hmm. Hmm, I think that's something that I could <laughs> probably uh, find pretty relevant in my life right now. What about you? Uh, yeah, I have four kids. So I, yeah, anything pertaining to stress and Christmas, I will, I will listen in yes, for sure. Yes, it's the same. Yes. Uh, what, have, what have you been doing to reduce stress in your life this oh, season, Paula? All really good things, like mostly just um, eating everything in sight <laughs> and um, procrastinating. Procrastinating. Oh, like procrastinating my procrastinating. So if I can put it off, I will put off putting it off. And so it's all working out really good for me. What about what about you? That's fantastic. Um, well, I have definitely spent too much time shopping and spent too much money. And um, well, today we're getting a tree. So yesterday I declared that we must prepare the living room, unlike all the other years. Yes. And then I had to stop and spend eight, eight hours sorting through all the toys in the house. And as I sat there. And I surveyed our masses <laughs> of material goods. I thought, my goodness, I, how could I possibly have justified buying anything at all? And the house still isn't ready for the tree. And so I've created a pretty good cycle of excess behavior, self-doubt, and stress already. Okay. So we really We're need this message, right? Yes, I think, good, yeah. It's a good thing they've tuned in to yeah. hear Pastor Matt and not us. Yes, for um, sure. <laughs> so if you, why don't you let us know in the comment session what you've done to reduce stress this season. And while you're there, take a moment to fill out the Connect card. It should be popping up any moment now. It's quick, it's easy, and it just gives us a record of your attendance. That's right. And in just a few moments, we are going to be joining the worship team. So let's prepare our hearts. Matthew 121 says, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Let's worship together now. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us
a light in the world. I just want to encourage you this morning to lean into that. Amen. Amen, amen. Friends, the holiday season is here. For some of us, that means joy, that means happiness. But for some of, the, for some of us, it's pain. And it's hard. This has been a hard season. So I want to encourage you on today, no matter where you find yourself in this season, be encouraged that God is with you. He's not left you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you.
for your love. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for being with us. God, we pray right now that you be with Pastor Matt. We pray that you might encourage his soul, that as he speaks directly what you have for us on today, God, we open our ears to hear and we open our hearts, oh God. Speak to us, Father. Encourage us in this season. We wait on you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may have your seats. Thank you for worshiping with us. to South Point Church. I want to say hi to those of you watching online, wherever you might be watching from. I want to say welcome and hi to those of you in Auditorium 8. I also want to say hi and welcome to those of you here in Auditorium 12. Hey man, is anyone fired up about the Christmas season today? I, I know I am. Hey, if this happens to be your first Sunday, you're a guest online or in person, we just want to say we're really grateful that you chose to be with us this morning. Uh, my name is Matt, and I'm part of the team here at South Point. And this morning, I have a confession to share. And here's my confession. Christmas is the most exciting time of the year for me. Man, I, I love Christmas. Like, I love everything about Christmas. I love the lights. I love the decorations. I like the presents. I like the smelly candles. Yes, I'm a guy, and I like those smelly candles. I like the food. I like the festivities. Man, I love Christmas. It's one of the favorite times. Matter of fact, I want to show you a picture of my house the Saturday after Thanksgiving. I'm going to put this picture up on here. 
This is our house right after Thanksgiving, man. I was out there putting up the Christmas lights. This is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see this, but we have a, a real tree because I love the smell of a real tree. It's got 1,200 lights on it. Man, I love Christmas. And you know, when I came out to take this picture, I've, I felt all warm and fuzzy inside because I love Christmas. And you know, I bet when we think about Christmas and we see the lights and the decoration and smell the food, we feel warm and fuzzy. But did you know that there's something beside warm and fuzzy that's actually behind all this? And if you're an adult, you know what I'm talking about, right? Because I want to show you the, this is the after picture, but you haven't seen the before picture. So I want to show you the before picture, which leads to something. And so we're going to put this picture up here. So you can see this is our real tree, right? Uh, this is the ladder. And what you can't see in the picture is there's a towel on the ground. Because as I went to water the Christmas tree Saturday morning, right before I put the lights on it, I accidentally knocked over all the water under our carpet and our new floors, right? And then as I'm cleaning that up, our brand new kitty. I don't know if you can see our little kitty. She's Miso. She's cute, isn't she? Little rascal. I mean, I love her. And so she climbs into the tree and is doing that. And as I go get a sip of coffee, right, to turn around, she's so cute. I get a sip of coffee. I notice something wet on the couch. She's peed on the couch. So what you can see is I got a towel floor with water. I've got, I'm trying to clean up pee on the couch. And then I do what all good dads do. I take a picture of the cat and I, I text it to my girls who are just in the same house. Everyone's sleeping, right? And then she decides to jump out of the tree. And as she jumps out of the tree, the tree begins to wobble and the tree falls over. And so as the tree falls over, it hits our ceiling fan that's going on. And then new needles fly everywhere. I try to catch a tree. I miss the tree. The water that I just put all in the tree now spills on the floor. Now the floor is even more wet, right? So so I grab the tree and the cat's just thinking, this is fun. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread, right? So I pick up the tree. I put it back and I hit the fan again as I go up. So needles go everywhere, right? There it is. There's pee. There's water. There's now more water. The cat's just having a blast, right? Everyone in my house is asleep. And so I let the tree go and I'm getting ready to walk and go get some towels. And what does the tree do? It falls down again. And so it spills more water. It lands on the ground and hits the fan. I pick it up, hit the fan again, pick it up. And I yell to my wife, love, I need your help. And she's like, what? You know, she's still saying, love, I need your help. And she goes, I'll be there in a minute. And no lie, about a minute later, I'm like, love, where are you? She goes, I'm getting dressed. I go, just come help me. So it's a great way to start a morning with your spouse by yelling at her from the room, right? And so what happened was I thought the tree fell over because the person that had cut the bottom had cut it crooked and that's why it was leaning and fall. So I had to pull it out. There's water on the floor. So I pick up the tree. It's no longer the net. So as I get it through the door, those needles are now shooting all over our nice clean floor that has water and cat pee and a cat running around, right? The cat thinks it's the greatest thing, right? So I take it out. I have to go into my shed. It's cold. I have to cut it. I put it in only to discover that the tree is crooked. So I've upset my wife, the cat has peed on the couch, there's water all over the floor, there's needles all over the floor, and my tree still isn't straight. And as I sat there and looked at my tree, I wanted to cry. And here's what you and I know about Christmas, is that sometimes behind the pretty lights and all the decorations, right, it doesn't always go the way that we would hope, right? I mean, come on, come on, come on. If you're here and you've adulted at least one Christmas, right? Come on, think about all the pressure and stress, right? Of having to put up decorations. I mean, the pastor just showed the picture of his house. So we gotta like, you know, do that, right? Thanks, Pastor Matt, you jerk. And like, we, we gotta do decorations, right? And then listen, if any of you've got kids, you know, kids always have like chorus concerts and Christmas plays and you gotta get them outfits and, and they have like gifts exchanged. And you're like, where did all this come from? And so now your schedule's full. And then you gotta figure out who needs what presents and so you have to make presents and buy presents and make lists and share lists and then on top of all of that like you have a work thing and now all of a sudden you got to do this secret Santa exchange with people at your work and you know they're going to spend five dollars and it's got like a 25 dollar gift limit and you're like well I got them something nice and look at me I got a gift card to getting your toenails clipped right like you're like, what is going on? And then on top of that, like you, there's baking and your neighbors bring you these beautiful cookies and you burnt your cookies out of the oven, right? And then on top of that, you got to go hang out with your family. And you know, everybody in the family's got somebody that's crazy. And if you're here thinking or online and going, we don't have anybody crazy in your family, you're it. <laughs> and right, we all know how the song goes, right? It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> Except if we are really honest as adults, the day after Christmas, because it wasn't all that we hoped it would be, we're exhausted and we're stressed. And this thing that we hoped for, this joy, this love, this hope, and this peace that we wanted to celebrate, 
we actually miss out on the very thing that we celebrate. And it got, it got me thinking. And this is why we're doing this series. Today's message is called, instead of Christmas, right, Christmas season, it's Stressmas season. One person got it. Great job, second service, right? It's stressmas season, right? Because like it is Christmas, but when you're adult, it's stressmas season. And here's why, at least for me, and you probably already know this, I mean, you guys are so smart, but here's what you probably know. The reason it's stressmas season for me is because during the holidays, for like a couple weeks in December, life doesn't work the way it's supposed to, January through November, but I always try to create those perfect picture moments with like family and friends, right? Isn't that what we try to do? Life doesn't work the way it's supposed to. And so for a couple of weeks in December, we go, listen, we want life to work. I mean, I put this little slide up and, and here's what I mean when it comes to Christmas. At Christmas time, we want life to work the way it's supposed to. We want life to work the way it's supposed to with our family. We want life to work the way it's supposed to with our friends and with food and festivities, right? Listen, from January to November, life is busted and broken. But for a couple of weeks, we try to control the chaos to create a picture of how life should be the life that we want it to be. However, the same issue that happens from January to November happens these three or four weeks in December. We, we, we still run into the same things. And, and I'm going to slow it on this side, and it's this. Like, we want life to work the way it's supposed to with our family, our friend, our food, and facility. But understandingly, we have the same problem. We experience pressure. There's money pressure, right? There's time pressure. There's too much to do and not enough time to get it done. And you got to go hang out with people. And some people you like and some people don't. And there's all these people. So you have pressure with people and, and time and money. And then we have problems. Listen, listen, listen. As good as you are and as awesome and as amazing as talented as everyone online or in the room, I want you to know you're probably going to going to burn something this Christmas. Just in case you know, one of the presents that your kids want is going to be sold out, and they're not going to be happy about that. Listen, if you're going somewhere with kids or you have kids, there's going to be at least five meltdowns, and probably all on Christmas Day. Aren't you blessed right now, right? And listen, when you go to hang with your family and you're hoping that one person behaves, they won't. Christmas is filled with chaos. There's problems. And then I like how in our worship team, they said, listen, for Christmas, some of us is joy, but for some of us, there, there's real pain in Christmas. For some of us, this will be the first Christmas without someone. For some of us, they'll be hurt. Maybe it's because of a divorce. We'll have to share our kids with, a, with their parents. There may be some dysfunction. We're going to go to the family, and because of someone's addiction or because of someone's behavior, there's drama and hurt in the family. And the same things that keep us from having the life that we want January to November hit us in December as we're trying to create this perfect picture with our family, with our friends, with fun and with food, because we know life doesn't work the way it's supposed to. And just for a couple of weeks in December, we work and try to control to create this picture. And unfortunately, the same issue comes up. And instead of experiencing the hope and the love and the peace and the joy that we want, we end up exhausted and stressed. And it leaves you and me and we asking this question today that we're going to try to take a look at and answer. And here's the question that all of us will ask, regardless of whether you're just exploring who Jesus is, regardless if you grew up with something other than Jesus, or regardless if you've been surrendered to Jesus all of your life. Here's the question we're all going to ask. How do we keep, what's the word? How do we keep stress from ruining the joy of Christmas? Like, we still have to buy presents for our family. We still have to hang out with our family. There's still our schedule full. How do we keep stress from ruining the joy of Christmas? How do we keep that pressure? How do we keep those problems? How do we keep the pain from keeping us from experiencing the very thing that we want? And I think in this season, we missed the whole point of the first Christmas. The whole point of the first Christmas was to solve the problems of the pressure and the problems and the pain, something that we couldn't fix on our own. I don't know if you know this, but there's a book in the Bible. It's called Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet. And so Isaiah tells us some things about this Messiah, the one who's going to come and make life the way it should be. Now, Isaiah was written 700 years before Jesus. Matter of fact, there are several writers in throughout the Old Testament. It's called the Torah, right? The, 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 the original Jewish scriptures, right? There are several prophecies, hundreds of them actually, that point to this one who will come into the world so that you, so that I, we don't have to be alone and undone. Someone who will fix the things, the pressure and the problems and the pain that we can't. 
Did you know there was a scientist who once did a math problem? And he said, listen, if there was one person who could be born in and fill just eight of these prophecies of this Messiah, like being born in Jerusalem, like being born of a virgin, like being buried in a borrowed tomb, like having none of their bones broken, having been uh, crucified as a criminal, like some of these amazing things. If just somebody could fill eight of them, the odds of that would be one and 10 to the 17th power. That's 10 with 17 zeros. Let me tell you what that looks like statistically. That's taking the state of Texas and filling the state of Texas up two feet of quarters, marking just one of the quarters, two feet of the whole state of Texas, throwing it somewhere random, blindfolding someone and saying, on your one try, you would have to find that. And yet Jesus fulfilled hundreds of the Old Testament's promises of who we'd be. Matter of fact, Isaiah tells us about this Messiah, and here's what he says in Isaiah 7. We're going to pick it up on the screen. It says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and she will be give, give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel. I mean, we see it on the, on the Christmas cards. We hear it in the Christmas carols, Emmanuel. But what does Emmanuel mean? Emmanuel means which God is with us. In a busted and broken world, when life doesn't work the way it's supposed to, the best news that you and I could hear today is that God is with us and that God is for us, that no one has to be alone and no one has to stay undone. Just because the world doesn't work the way it's supposed to doesn't mean it'll always stay that way. And God gave a promise to send someone who would fix what we couldn't. And Isaiah tells us what this means, what a God with us actually means. And he says a little bit later in Isaiah 9, and it says this. It says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And that's great news. That's what we celebrate, the birth of Jesus in December. And by the way, just I don't want to freak any of you Christians out. He probably wasn't born in December. We just celebrate it there, right? But it says we know he was born in a manger. He showed up, but Jesus didn't stay a baby. Jesus lived the best kind of life. Jesus willingly went to a cross. And if he had done all that, that would have been great. But he conquered hell and death. Jesus didn't say a baby. And it says he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I don't know if you've watched the news or talked to your neighbors or looked around the world. I have a question for you. Does the world need some wonderful counselor where people can't even get along right now? I mean, we have all these ideas, we have all this technology, we have all this science, and yet we still have the same old problems. What if it isn't science or technology or more education that we need? What if it's just the kind of counsel that only God could give? I don't know if you saw the news of the loss of life in Michigan. We need a mighty God who can step in and only do what God can do. All the brokenness in our families and the wounds and hurt, we need an everlasting father. When you think about all the conflict politically and racially, And socioeconomically, we need a prince of peace. What the world doesn't need is us trying to control to create a perfect picture. What we need is a person who can deliver the promise to do what we can't do. And it got me thinking, what if celebrating Christmas isn't about creating this perfect picture where life is as it should be? What if celebrating Christmas is a reminder that there's a person who we get to be connected to whose promises to fix what we can't are trustworthy and good? What if it comes down to celebrating instead of trying to control the busted and broken world? So this morning, I want to look at three ways that what God tells us about himself as a wonderful counsel, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. What if we look like for that to apply as we begin this Christmas season so that at the end, we don't end up exhausted. At the end, we don't end up stressed out. What if we could actually experience this hope and this love and this peace and this joy that we celebrate this Christmas? And so here's what it looks like. First, when it comes to pressure, right? When it comes to pressure, because listen, we're all going to have pressure. Pressure isn't going away, right? What if we allowed Jesus to be our wonderful counselor? What if we set boundaries with our money and our time and our people? Because listen, you want to know what's wrong in the world is we all think we don't need boundaries. We all think, listen, God doesn't know what he's doing. He's just trying to keep us to have fun. But what if God who created us actually gives us boundaries because boundaries create space for life? 
What if we allowed Jesus to be our wonderful counselor and we set boundaries around money, around our time, and around the people? Listen, there's nothing inherently wrong with money. It's neutral. It can be used for good or evil. There's nothing wrong with time. All of us have 24 hours to use. We are made to create it to be in relationship with other people. The reality is those things, though, won't totally fulfill us because we were made to be in a relationship with our Creator. And here's what you know, and here's what I know, and here's what we've all experienced. You didn't have to come to church today to hear this. That when we don't set boundaries around our money and our time and around people, then life doesn't work the way it was intended. And isn't it odd that in this season when we try to make life work the way it's supposed to, we usually have the worst boundaries around our money. Can I, set, can I get an amen? Okay, one person. That's great. All of you are with me. Thank you. Right? I mean, think about it. Did you know that one in five Americans will go into credit card debt that they will not pay off until June from this Christmas? I mean, I don't know if Jesus is honored because we went in debt to buy presents, right? What if we set boundaries around our time and just said, hey, listen, no is a complete sentence that we can't do everything and be everything. What if we just set boundaries around our time? And what if we just set boundaries around people? Listen, our goal is not to make people happy. Our God is to love them the way Jesus did. Their happiness is between them and Jesus. Can I get an Amen. What if, in the middle of the pressure that won't go away, we allow Jesus to be our wonderful counselor? True story. This summer, I had some vacation time. And during my vacation time this summer, uh, my wife and I, we've lived in the same house for the last 23 years. And we have these trees that have grown and they needed to be cut back. So I had a brilliant idea. Brilliant idea. I was going to rent one of those um, trucks that has like a bucket on it that goes up 30 feet high. I have some friends with some chainsaws. And I said, I'm going to rent a truck. I'm going to borrow some chainsaws. And I'm going to trim our trees because I watched a YouTube video. <laughs> now, I was telling my friend I was so excited. I, we insulated our attic. And my wife, after doing that, said, I can see why people pay people to do that. We were stupid. And I was like, well, great. I'm going to rent a bucket truck and borrow some chainsaws. And I watched a couple videos on how to treat trims. I got this. So I was telling my friend this, and he says, so let me get this right. Have you ever operated a bucket truck? Nope. But you're going to rent one? Yep. Uh, have, how, how much have you used a chainsaw? A little bit, but I watched a YouTube video. And then he says, are you scared of heights? Yep. So you're going to get up in a bucket truck where you're scared of heights. You've never used a chainsaw really well, and you've never operated a bucket truck, and you're going to fix all your trees. I go, yes. He goes, you're a moron. <laughs> and he wasn't wrong. And he goes, can I give you some advice? Can I give you some counsel. It sounds like you should let someone who knows what they're doing do that so that you don't hurt yourself. Because you're my pastor and I love you. I don't want to see you on a cast or like missing a limb up on stage sharing a story when I should have told you don't do that. So I listened to his advice. We got someone who actually knew what to do. They did it some time. I was just down, the grump guy down, getting the stuff off the bottom, handing stuff. And it worked out great. It did everything. And I didn't get hurt. Because someone who, hold on, because someone who knew what they were doing, I let them do. I wonder if we let the creator of the universe be God instead of us. What if we allow Jesus to be our wonderful counselor? Will we follow the boundaries around money, time, and people? So that life isn't about those things. That that pressure is passed on and we listen to that so that we can experience the joy and the peace and the love and the hope that we were meant to have this season. But it still doesn't solve the problems, right? I mean, we're still stuck with problems. I mean, you're going to have problems when it comes to Christmas, which is the next slide because it's going to say problems right here. The next is problems, right? We need Jesus to be our Prince of Peace because, listen, like I said, something is going to go. I'm telling you now, something is going to Just smile. You're not excited about it, but I'm going to tell you, I've had enough Christmases with kids and family. It never goes the way you want it to go. Something is going to go wrong. But allow Jesus to be our Prince of Peace. Well, how do we do that? What if we practice a daily ritual as a reminder? What if every day we stopped and we did something? I was talking to my wife and I said, you know what I really want to do? I'm, I never didn't grow up in church. I didn't grow up with like rituals, but I want to get an Advent candle. So every night as we sit down at dinner, I want to light that candle and be reminded that I have a Prince of Peace. You see, here's the thing. When we have problems, we believe God's against us. And it goes something like this. When something doesn't work, we go, if God just loved me, that would work out the way it was supposed to. And many times, that's not just true. Let me 
give you kind of an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, as I was preparing this message and thinking about my Christmases, I was reminded of a Christmas that I had. I was probably 11, maybe, maybe 12 years old. I'll never forget one of my bi- biological parents was, was upset at me. I mean, they looked me in the eye, and they just they had this look, and they said, do you think you deserve any presents this year? And the honest answer to that is, no, I didn't. Um, but in fairness to me, uh, I had a bunch of things happen, like my mom committed suicide, being molested. Like, there were some things that happened in my life that explained why I acted out and why I was having behavior. It didn't excuse it, but it, but it explained. But I remember when my biological family member asked me, do you think you deserve any presents? While I said no, what I really wanted to know was, but am I still loved or do I have to earn your love? And so many of us lack peace because we believe we have to earn the love of God, our creator. We have to earn the love of those around us. And here's the amazing news about Christmas is God doesn't love us because we earned it or deserved it. I mean, that's what's so amazing is that Jesus showed up into a world that was busted and broken where we're all flawed and we've all failed. And he showed up not because we are good or because we earned it, but because he loves us. Because every man, woman, and child who's watching or here is meant to be a son or daughter of the Most High. And that God is for you. At South Point, we have a saying, anyone that would die for you is for you. Anyone that would show up into this busted and broken and be on our behalf, who would be our counsel, would be our everlasting Father, our mighty God, our Prince of Peace, is for you. You see, Jesus didn't come so that we would have a pass from problems in life. Jesus says in John 16, he says this, he says, in this world, you will have trouble. But he says, take heart, I've overcome the world. You see, we don't have peace because we get a pass from problems. We have peace because we trust a person whose tomb is empty. Can I get an amen? Because God is a promise keeper. When he promised to send someone who would fix what we can't, he sent his son, Jesus, And he told us in advance, and Jesus told us that he would live and that he would die and would conquer hell and death. Our peace doesn't come because we have a lack of problems. Our peace comes because we have a promise of a person. Even if we can't fix it, he can. And as we go through life, we need to be reminded. As I wrapped the lights around that tree, as I was so frustrated at all that went wrong, those little lights were meant to be a reminder that Jesus is the light of the world shining into darkness for me to know that I'm not alone and you are not have to be undone. But we still experience pain, right? I mean, pain is a part of life and Jesus is our mighty God. Now, I wish I could tell you that there's some words that I could say, say today that would take your pain away. Listen, if this is your first Christmas without like your grandmother or without a spouse or without, without someone that you love, like There's no words that are going to take that pain away. Loss is very real. For some of us, it's dysfunction. You're going to go to that family event, but you know he or she, that aunt or uncle, that brother, that sister, that mom or that Somebody is going to create a fight, and you know it. You know there's going to be pain, but you go to that dysfunction anyway. And maybe for some of us, it's hurt. It's that adult child who's making decisions that you can't control that break your heart. The reality is, is that in a busted and broken world, we're going to experience pain. And we need Jesus, our mighty God, who can fix what we can't. And did you know we can give space for both grief and celebration? Did you know that it is really okay at Christmas time to do both? It's not either or, to just go, woo, or cry. Like, it's, it's okay to go, in the season, I have some pain and I have some grief. And it's okay, even in our grief and our pain, to celebrate that there's a God who stepped into time and space who is for us. Speaking of pain, I'm always reminded at Christmas time of my pain of growing up as a child. You know, I have two daughters. One is 21 and one is 23. Do you know one of my biological parents has never seen my daughter's Never seen my youngest daughter ever, saw my oldest daughter once. And when I think about Christmas, neither one of my biological parents getting to see me and my life, my wife and my children, well, it's painful. But Jesus is a mighty God. My adopted dad took 
our whole family to a vacation. My adopted daddy is awesome. And I remember we were out doing something, and I looked in my adopted dad's T-shirt. And I don't think I've ever told my adopted dad this story. Um, but he had a shirt, and I'm probably going to cry, so I'm going to try to be careful. It said, Grandpa, since 1999. Now, I'm the oldest of the family, and my firstborn daughter, she was born in 1999. And as much pain as there is about my upbringing, Jesus, the mighty God, has stepped in to do what only God can do. Because God didn't just show up into the world to tell you, to tell me that we are not alone, that he is for us. But we don't have to stay undone. Now, I want to be totally honest. Some of us will get miracles on this side of eternity. And others of us, we won't get our miracle till the other side of eternity. But what I love about Christmas is that God was willing to come experience all that we experience, and he conquered hell and death. His promise that he would send someone was proven true in the birth of Jesus. And his promise that he will come back and fix all the pain, that he is the same God who raised Jesus from the dead, will fix what is busted and broken. Someday our creator will make all the things that are busted. Listen, you don't need to come to church. You don't need to read the Bible. You know and I know the world doesn't work the way it's supposed to. We celebrate Christmas because there's one who will fix what we can't. And do we make space to both grieve and to celebrate that there's a God who came and was with us and a God who can fix what we can? I mean, if I was going to sum it up in one sentence, I, I would say it this way. Here, here's how I'd sum up the whole thing. I would say Christmas celebrates the life-altering promises of God. When Jesus showed up and he was born, it proved that God's promise to come fix what was broken, that God was a promise keeper. And then when Jesus said, listen, I promise you, though they put me on the cross, the tomb will be empty. And I promise I will come back. Christmas doesn't celebrate we get a pass. Christmas celebrates the promise to come. Not in our ability to create our perfect picture. Christmas isn't about us getting it right. Christmas isn't about making it all the way we wish it would be. Christmas is celebrating a God who loved us who will fix what we can. So in the middle of the pressure, in the middle of the problems, in the middle of the pain, we can find hope, we can find love, we can find joy, and we can find peace so that we're not exhausted and stressed, but enjoy the reality that there's a God who loves us and it's for us. Close with a true story. I, this will be the second year that my grandmother, my nano, passed away. She passed away almost two years ago. It was two years ago, right before Thanksgiving. When I was a little kid, I loved going to nano's house, my grandmother's house. It was one of the safest places in all the world I ever felt like just being at her house, it just felt so safe. And now you have to understand, my grandma was one of the old school grandmas. Any of y'all got those old school grandmas? Like she smoked, she chain smoked, and she cracked, she talked like that. She had a little bit of crackle, you know, a little bit of rasp from smoking, right? And my grandma, she was tough. Like my grandma loved me, but when I was like five years old and we play cards and I would lose, she'd go, hey, hooray for me and too bad for you. Like <laughs> grandma was tough. But when I would go to grandma's house, Nana's house for Christmas, I felt safe and I felt loved because I knew it didn't matter what I did, where I was at, or what was going on in the world, that my grandmother loved me, that my grandmother was for me. And my grandmother, she would tell me the truth, but she would do whatever she could to help me move forward. I love that about my grandmother. And for some of us, we've never had that safe feeling where we knew there was someone that was for us that regardless of our flaws or our failures. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas. That God himself stepped into our mess and says, I love you and I am for you. That you are sacred and life comes from surrender. That the things that we miss that God provides in Jesus, our wonderful counselor, our prince of peace, and our mighty God, because someday he will make life the way it's meant to be.
So I want to give three challenges to you, whether you're online or in person. And here's challenge number one. Share with a friend a boundary you're going to set this Christmas season. And you might be saying, well, I'm not going to share it with a friend. I'm going to share it with a spouse. I never ask you to share those things with your spouse because then you fight over them when they hold you accountable. Can I get an amen? So find a friend. And share one boundary you're going to set this season. Now, if you go, listen, I don't need to set a boundary. I'm pretty good about that. Maybe here's what you need to do is you need to share one kind of thing, one ritual you're going to do every day to remind you that it's not about a past from problems. It's about the peace we find in our creator in Christ. What will be that one thing that you'll do daily? Maybe it's join. We have this Advent thing that we're doing on the YouVersion Bible app on your phone. Maybe it's that. For those of you that are here and you're paying, maybe it's simply share with a friend the grief that you're going through because you can grieve and celebrate at the same time because there's a God who loves us, who's a wonderful counselor, who's the Prince of Peace and mighty God. So through the problems and through the pressure and through the pain, we can still say Merry Christmas. Let me pray. God, thank you. From January to November, we realized how deeply life is busted and broken. And in the month of December, regardless of our background, we try to create the world that we wish it was. And the greatest news is, God, you didn't leave us to ourselves. Even though we can't fix what is broken, you showed up so that we wouldn't be alone. And then you fixed what we couldn't fix so we wouldn't have to stay undone. What we celebrate is not our ability to control to create this picture, We celebrate a person whose promises are true and who loves us. And for that, we love you and we are grateful. And all who agreed said, amen. Church, would you stand and worship with us?
Well, I just want to say thank you to God that He loves us. This is what Christmas is about. Hey, I get to share a pretty exciting announcement that has been 17 years in the making. It's a privilege and honor because people have been asking me lately, hey, when do you think we're going to get into our building? When do you think we're going to be able to have our first service? Is anyone excited to know when we'll be able to have our first service in our building? Well, I have some exciting and great news, like a giddy school kid opening a present. We're going to host our Christmas services in our building on December 23rd and 24th, God willing. We're fired up about that. Very excited. A couple of things to know about our Christmas services. We'll be holding our Christmas services on December 23rd at 6 p.m. And we'll also be hosting our Christmas services on the 24th Christmas Eve at 3 p.m. and at 5 p.m. Now this is all God willing. We have some things we'll continue to work through, but that is our current plan. So we're really excited about that. There's a couple of things that you need to know about that. Because transitioning from a portable church in a movie theater into a permanent home is going to be a ton of work for our staff and for our teams, it's going to change our Sunday order of service. So I need everyone to pay attention. Give me a thumbs up if you're paying attention online and in the room. Okay. So next Sunday, December 12th, we're going to have digital services only. Give me a thumbs up if you heard that. Digital only services December 12th, and we're going to be digital only December 19th, 12th, 19th. Digital only services both at 9 and 11. That allow the staff team to take all this equipment that we use, get into the building, and get our building prepared for our Christmas services. We are so excited about it. Hey, can we just give God a round of applause for all that He's done through this? Thank you, Pastor Matt. That is so exciting. I know I've been looking forward to this for about 13 years now. Yes, I am so excited too. So just remember, uh, next Sunday, the 12th, and then the Sunday after that, we will be uh, online only. And don't worry, once we uh, transition to our permanent campus, we're going to continue our, all our online services. So we will see you right back here all those times. Awesome. And just a reminder during this holiday season, sometimes it can be really painful. And we want you to know that you are not alone. If you're struggling or feeling any certain way during this holiday season, please know that you can reach out to us. Yes. We would love to connect you to a Stevens minister who can just walk alongside you or celebrate recovery group or even a professional counselor. If that's what yeah. you need, please reach out at any time. You can contact us on social media or call or text us at 240-298. No, that's my number again. 240-925-8787. <laughs> <laughs> Eight seven eight seven. If you right, accidentally right. call Melissa, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I will absolutely She'll talk to you. She'll point you in the right direction. <laughs> yes. Don't worry, friends. Yes. That always uh, is a, <laughs> something we're afraid we're going to do, give out the wrong number. But I think you guys know by now that it's 8787, so mm -hmm. you can always reach out. Hey, friends, I just want to say thank you to those who uh, have continued to give faithfully. We are so thankful for that, uh, for your commitment. Um, and if this is your first service with us, we just want this service to be a gift to you. If you are a regular attender, you can head over to southpointforyou.com slash give, or you can uh, uh, click on the give button that's popping up in your chat right now. And we appreciate that so much. I also wanted to let you guys know that if you have children fifth grade or younger, they are invited to uh, participate in the special Christmas video that we're going to show at our Christmas Eve services. Uh, and so if you have kiddos that would like to participate, uh, there will be an email coming to you from the kids ministry team. Or if you can't find that, you can go and email our worship pastor, Tracy, at worship at southpoint4u.com. Uh, and she will be able to give you more details and answer any questions that you might have. I, I love the children's yeah. Christmas program. It's going to be great. All right. Well, everyone, please have a great week. And remember, you can always reach out to us, 240-925-8787. <laughs> and you matter <laughs> deeply, deeply to God. God. That's right. Have a great week, everyone. Merry Christmas.